I get a good load of of wood in here. That's a softer wood, um, spruce. That's a piece of tamarack. The rest of the other two larger pieces I put in are birch. Um, the tamarack and the birch will develop um, a pretty good bed of coals, and that's what we want. We want to get some some heat going here. I'll just give you a quick look at the construction here. You can see there's insulation going in all the way around here. Where uh, this is too close, I can't really give you a perspective on this. Okay, this is my temporary little kitchen in here. Now, some of what I've had to do here, I had to do a little bit ahead of time. Um, for example, these are dried mushrooms, a mixture. Uh, because they were dried, I've been soaking them in just a little bit of a beef broth overnight. I just really wanted them to rehydrate so that they would be uh, a little bit less leathery as they sometimes get. Um, we have my homemade spice mix here. That's pretty yummy stuff. A little bit zippy. We have here our cornbread mix. That's going to make a real dandy cornbread. I can't seem to get far enough away in this small building the way it is at the moment with everything in here to be able to <clears throat> uh, get both myself and what I'm doing in the picture. Of course, it's not unusual for me to cut my own head off in these things, so I guess that's not really um, something that's going to be a surprise. So here's a little bit about what we're going to do. We're going to take our mushrooms. Now all this is is a beef cube that I dissolved in some lukewarm water and I put a little handful of those mushrooms in and I did that last night so that it would have time to uh, you know, just to soften up because they, they take a while. Also, um, for practical reasons, I washed this stuff up indoors before I came out here. So we're going to do this, well there's actually three stages to this. The beaver uh, even though it's sort of a stew, I would call it something of a stew, will not be cooked in the pot with the rest of the items. Now, you can get a perfectly delicious stew. All you have to do, really, it's, it's like the simplest one-pot meal. You take whatever ingredients you like, plunk them in a pot, add a little bit of broth or whatever, and you're good. But, that'll give you a very good stew. If you want an even better stew, you want to treat some of the, uh, I shouldn't be eating with my, while I'm talking here. If you want a better stew, you want to treat some of the ingredients individually first. What that does is, it gives you the opportunity, by doing it in separate levels, to build up a, a greater depth of flavor. So because we're using the front shoulders, I know this is going to be a little bit tough. I don't want to cook this in a crock pot, it kind of spoils the mood. So what we're going to do here is I parboiled that beaver this morning in the house just a little bit. It's not by any slight stretch cooked, maybe for, for 10 minutes. Um, I marinated it overnight in, a, in a, just a slight brine. Uh, brine is basically salt water. Um, and then you can add whatever flavors you want, if you want. Brine is salt water. Um, I like to add other little bits of flavor, a little bit of, uh, you know, garlic and whatever. I love garlic and I love buckets of onions, so um, I use a lot of that type of stuff. And it just builds, again, another depth of flavor. Especially when we know that we're going to be dealing with something that's a little tougher. So the marinade alone will be a pretty good step in helping to soften up that meat. But what we're also going to do is we're going to bread it a little bit. Uh, and I brought uh, a flour mixture in here. Be careful I don't cut my fingers off when I'm talking. Uh, which is this right here. And that's basically just flour. So I'm just building up a little bit of a base for veggies here. Maybe what I'll do is I'll shut this off and I'll bring you back because I've still got more carrot, potatoes, sweet potato. This is going to take a few minutes, so I'll bring you right back. So that's what our meat's going to go in. We just put a little oil in there. We'll get it fried up a little bit. But then what we're going to do is we're going to steam it. So 
that will tenderize it. We'll show you how that works down the road. Actually, I probably should have switched and put the veggies in the Dutch oven. However, we'll figure that out. The cornbread, I have this other cast iron item. I've had this for a long time. I'll bring it over to the light here so you can see it better. This is a little cast iron um, baking dish. And if you look, I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's corn. They're cast little tiny corn cobs. You can see I have really big hands. So these are probably six or seven inches long. And, uh, and they're little corn cobs. So when you make your cornbread, what I'm going to end up with is five little cornbread breadsticks, I guess, uh, that look like little corn cobs when you flip them over. So we'll see how that works out. I've used it before quite a few times. It's, you know, you have to be a little bit cautious about getting them out, but it works really well. Okay, after I got my veggies all chopped up and put them in the other pot just to, to get organized here. So I switched them into the Dutch oven because that's where the vegetables are going to cook. And uh, so I've got my sweet potatoes, regular potatoes, onions, celery. Um, there's a little bit of onion soup powder mix that I had left over. It was only about a tablespoon. It was all I had left, so I popped it in there, and then the uh, mushrooms that I had softened up there uh, the last night. So that's what's in there for now, and uh, we're going to get that on the heat and let it start cooking. There's a little water in there too, probably an inch of water in there, just so it can sort of steam and cook and bubble away. And I'm just going to have to keep an eye on it because it's, it's really ripping hot in here. All right, set that right up on the top. Get the lid on and let it do its thing. Just let that slowly simmer away. I should have made a trivet for this. I didn't get around to it, but I did bring a couple of small pieces of rebar in here so that if it gets too hot, uh, I don't want it to stick to the bottom and burn. So I may have to lift that up just a little bit and put those rebar underneath it to, uh, to regulate the heat slightly. We'll see how it goes. I've already seasoned the meat well. Uh, when it was in its marinade, and then also when it was in the pan there, I like Cajun, I like, I don't like it really hot, but I do like something with a bit of spice to it, so I'll just get these all coated up there. I want the oil good and hot, because if the oil is too cold, when you put this in, yeah, it'll make this very greasy. The oil soaks into the, into the meat long before it has an opportunity to actually uh, cook the outside of it. If the oil is hot enough, and I, I don't mean sm well, almost smoking hot, um, it sears the outside of the meat so quickly that very little oil penetrates and you don't end up with a greasy, uh, fattening, high cholesterol sort of a meal. It's not all that nice anyways because it's just too greasy and so on. I'm just going to put a little, little bit of tin foil here. Set that there like that. And we're already here. And I'll show you what happens next when I get the pan ready, or the pot ready. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's actually starting to sizzle slightly in there. So that, uh, that wood stove's cooking hot. I, I didn't realize it would get that hot that fast. But that's okay. The trick to frying anything at home or here or anywhere else uh, when you're doing that is little and often. Basically I mean put in a few things at a time, let them get going, take them out and then do another batch. Let the oil recover its heat a bit and carry on. Okay I brought the pan off of the stove over here because I'm starting to lose light. I'm going to make the most of uh, what light I've got coming through the window. So these have been frying for five minutes or so. I put the lid on it to bring the heat up and give it a good go. Well, there's a lot of nice little nuggets here that are just almost falling apart right now and I haven't even done the main cooking yet. This is going to be so tender that you can't even cut them properly with a fork. They just fall apart. I'm just going to pour this stuff off and uh, I'll mix it with veggies and a whole bunch of other stuff and put it in a container, a good sized container, and then when I feed the dogs I'll give them just a tablespoon or so in their supper, warmed up a little bit at that time uh, in order to uh, give them a little flavor. I wouldn't give them too much because it's very greasy and it's I'm sure no better for them than for us, but uh, sure helps them enjoy their kibble. We're gonna let that steam away 
as I said, normally I'd let it steam for an hour, but I don't know if that meat really needs that long. It'll just fall to pieces. And when that's nearly done, uh, maybe when we're about 15 minutes away, we'll make up our uh, corn cob bread. Oh my good. Oh man. You should smell that. Oh, I have definitely got to get get smell a vision. Oh, and look at that. Just falling apart cooked. Beautiful. I actually wouldn't want to cook them anymore. I don't want them to end up too mushy. I'm really losing light here. It's probably close to 5 30, 6 o'clock. It's actually 6 o'clock in the evening. And I'm just going to ladle this into the molds. And the little molds are the one I showed you, the, uh, the little cast iron one that's the corn cobs. So we're going to have corn cob cornbread. So I've preheated this slightly. I just put it for about two or three minutes on the on the oven there, the stove. The reason I did that is because I put a little bit of butter in the bottom of each one of these. Uh, I did that for two reasons. First off, butter and cornbread is just scrumptily ashes here. And the other reason was that uh, I, had, I didn't oil it or anything, so it'll definitely help when it comes time to separate it out. So it was getting dark last night. Oh, there's our little cornbreads. I was losing light. I could see clearly enough to finish cooking this in the in the trailer, but um, the camera was struggling. I don't know if you can see that. This is a piece of our. I, I just broke it in half. Cornbreads, not too. Well, here that's a better piece to show. I don't know if you can see the little lines in there. There's actually little kernels of corn in that. Um, it's not too clear, but it's kind of neat, anyways. So there it is. There's our beaver and the stew portion of it and uh, <coughs> just that, that, uh, there we go and that is absolutely delicious um, I have to be honest I've already nibbled on a little bit as I was dishing it up here um, I couldn't resist it just smells fantastic and uh, so I want to thank you for watching um, if you enjoyed this uh, please subscribe if you haven't already and hit the little bell so that you'll get notified when new videos come out um, if you liked it hit the like button and uh, I'd appreciate it if you'd share it with anybody else that might like it and that's it for this week so everybody have a safe one and we'll see you in the next time